Let's put our hands together and worship Jesus. Amen. Exalt him.
Bless me. Cause when we see find strength to face the day.
Bible just believe it. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Don't ever second guess him. Hallelujah. My songs are all mixed up here. That's okay. One of them is going to look good to me. How about this one? Out of Abraham. God of good covenant. And God of Abraham. God's going to do here in the East Coast. How many believe God for a third great awakening? Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you believe that? Amen. Yeah. 
Praise God. Let's contend together. Bless uh, Pastor Campbell and Pastor Ganier. Wonderful conference we just came back from. Man, powerful ministry. Life-changing word of God preaching was exciting to be there. And we're really, uh, really psyched for what God is going to do here in this place in Greece. Amen. Let's pray for the Suspanskis, the Kings and the Spicers laboring in Jacksonville and lifting up my pastor, Keith and Terry Sullivan. Amen. Who are actually present here in the building. Amen. And we're going to believe God together for success in Brighton. Our mother church, disciples to be made. Amen. And uh, ministry to rise up in that place and uh, to turn the world upside down. Can you say amen? amen? Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Let's also pray for what God is doing here in Greece. We have some local needs here. Um, there's a girl by the name of Carm who has a brain tumor. Amen. It says here that the cancer needs to be removed and she can... Uh, and then just trust in Jesus and he can do that for her tonight as we pray. There's a new church in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Our brother and sister were launched out from the uh, conference. Richard from the mall. Richard from Walmart. Amen. And uh, let's also pray for Nick, 17-year-old young man. Amen. Who prayed outside of Burlington. Thank God for the mall in Burlington where we can witness and tell people about Jesus. Yes. Let's also pray for Alex from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Amen. Isha uh, and uh, Karina, we're praying for our police and firefighters and active military that God would overshadow their lives and bless them. Amen. How many have a need this evening that, uh, amen, God sees your hand, brother. Amen. And, uh, amen, I did not mention it. And you need God to move in your life. You, need, you came here for a miracle. And you're expecting God to do something tremendous here. Amen. God sees your hands. and Amen, sister. And you're online. Amen. God loves you, has died for your sins, and wants to heal your body. Amen. And in this time, I'm going to ask you, if you're sick in your body, to put your hand on that body part. If it's your brain, you're anxious, you're fearful, you're, uh, you're going through things in your life, or a part of your body, you're in pain. Amen. Touch it right now, and God will heal you by his blood and by his stripes. And we're going to go ahead and lift up, uh, amen, these requests and your special needs. And I'm going to ask David Berg's going to open us up in prayer this evening when we sit aside. Let's pray, sir. Shalala, Lamando, God, you're an awesome God. Nothing has been held from you, God. You can do the impossible, God. You can do things that we can't, that no doctors can do, Lord God. We're trusting you, God. We're believing you, God. We're calling on the, the resurrection and the life, God. You have power for people. People. And God, you can break sin and break curses and break uh, addiction. God, help our leadership churches uh, and help our fellowship throughout the earth, Lord God. All that you want to accomplish, God, solidify it here tonight, God. Come down and touch souls, God, and make them born again, God, and give them the hope of, of everlasting life, God, and bless them, Lord God, and we contend for the miraculous, God. We're believing you, God, for outrageous things, God, difficult things, God, things that are impossible, God, with men become impossible with you, Lord God, and we're thankful, God, for you, and we're trusting you, God, to complete this work, God. Be glorified tonight in Jesus' wonderful name. We ask, Lord, that you touch each one of us so that our needs might be met in you. Reveal yourself to us by your speak. Speak to us, heal us. Do what's necessary, Lord, so we can be functional and fruitful as we bring in the last of our... Because it's obvious the times are getting like that. Get us prepared so that we can harvest the people and help them get them yeah. healed, get them saved. That's right. Get them strong enough so that when you come, they'll go with you. In your name. Amen. Amen. Wonderful to be right with Jesus. Amen. And let's go ahead and take a minute to greet one another and make everybody feel welcome here.
wonderful to be in church. Thank you for coming. Amen. We're looking forward to some miracles tonight. Can anybody say amen? Yes. Well, we're all prepared for it. We're waiting. We're expected. And God's going to help us. Amen. A few announcements for this local church. And that is that on Sunday morning, we'll be here at 1030 for our morning service. We also have a second service at night with a different sermon, different songs. We're going to be worshiping God together at 630, 530 is our time where we pray. We always like to pray before our services to get God's anointing and God's power to fall. Amen. Because without him, amen, this is just a moose club. <laughs> the Kiwanis are some kind of gathering, right? Some club. We need Jesus and we're going to contend for him and uh, all that he wants to accomplish tonight. Amen. Wednesday night we have a midweek service at 7.30, 6.30 is our time for prayer. We also uh, always outreach on Saturday at 11. We like to go into the local community and uh, give our testimony, tell people about Jesus and invite them to church. Amen. One of our favorite haunts is uh, Walmart on yeah. Dewey Avenue. There's always people there that are open parking lot coming and going. It's exciting to hear uh, what God is doing. I did get a chance to pray on Thursday night for an older gentleman who's getting a hip replacement. And I said, are you, are you in pain? He said, yeah, I'm in pain. Do you want to play, pray here in the parking lot? He said, yeah, I want to pray. I believe God's going to heal me. So we prayed right there. I said, put your hand on your hip. He put his hand on his hip. We prayed in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then the smile came on his face and God touched him. Because that's what our God can do. Can yeah. you say amen? Yeah. amen? Hallelujah. Didn't even want to wait for the uh, miracle crusade we're having here. How dare you do that? <laughs> amen. So praise God. Pray for him. Amen. Maybe he'll come tomorrow night and you can shake your, his hand yourself. Amen. And talk to him about it. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go ahead and change the order of our service and uh, take up an offering. Praise the Lord. And uh, this is for the local church here. And uh, I want to just read a quick scripture here if this device will uh, comply. This is way in the beginning of uh, creation here, amen, in the book of Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have begotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. That was very nice. Maybe some corn or some wheat or some kind of maybe uh, grapes perhaps. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Amen. So I'm just using this scripture here because I want you to think about even in the beginning of man's existence here in the book of Genesis, we see that an offering is being made to the Lord. We have an opportunity tonight to also give to God and give to the work. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And there was something that was significant about Abel's offering, amen. Amen. It was a blood sacrifice. It was meaningful. It was an animal. Think about your pets. You would never want to do that, but you have more of an affection for that than some fruit from your garden. Can you say amen? Right. Something more meaningful is required here by the Lord, and God really wants to help us. So I'm going to ask the usher to come forward. Let's give tonight out of an expression of worship, amen, and giving to God out of reverence. Something meaningful. Let's give to God our tithes and offerings. They are holy to God. And uh, amen. Let's go ahead and pray and believe God together for all the needs of this revival today. Amen. Brother David, can you bless the offering? Yeah, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you that we can recognize how you care for us and how you provide for us. That's right. A little bit that we give doesn't even begin to touch how much you give us. So we ask you to bless this offering for your purpose. Bless the people who give in your name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your offering and your giving tonight. Let's worship God with this song. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change. You never change. You never fail. True are your promises. And true are your
to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. And so we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Why is your love and grace? Why is your love and grace? Why is your love and grace? And you never change. Welcome him up here, Pastor Keith Sullivan. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to be here. It really is. Excited for what God is going to do. If you have your Bibles, uh, Acts chapter 3. If you don't, you can follow along. The uh, scripture will be up on the screen. I want to make a statement right before we start. Jesus Christ yes. is risen from the dead. Amen. That's right. That is an important statement because that means that he has defeated death. No one else has, but Jesus has. And if that same spirit, is, which is here, but how it touches your mortal body, it can do a miracle for you, the Holy Spirit. In the book of Mark, Jesus was sending his disciples he was giving them what we call the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And then he makes this statement in verses 17 and 18. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. He says, in my name, they will do a number of things. Cast out demons, speak in new tongues or languages. Uh, they will be able to handle snakes with safety. If they drink of any deadly poison thing, it will not hurt them. They will, be, they will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Amen. It goes on to say at the end of that, uh, uh, that uh, chapter in verse uh, 20, it says that the disciples went everywhere preaching, the, uh, preaching and the Lord worked through them confirming what they said by miraculous signs. In the text we're going to read, we're going to read about Peter and John, the apostles. Many uh, know, you know, I, I wouldn't want to put you on the spot to see if you could name all 12. <laughs> if you could get 10, maybe we'd be doing well, right? I know, uh, you know, but uh, in the reality, we know Peter and John. And the Bible says as they were going up to the temple, they met a man who was born lame. And all he could do is beg. And God did a miracle. Let's read verses 1 through 9. It says, And Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in a 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a lame man from birth was carried in. And each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one that is uh, called the beautiful gate. So he could beg from the people going into the temple. And when Peter and John were about to enter, he asked them for some money. And Peter and John looked intently. And Peter looked and uh, said, look at us. And the lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But when Peter said, I don't uh, have any silver or gold for you, but, what I, uh, but I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Get up and walk. Yes. Then Peter took the 
lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up and stood on his feet and began to walk. They then walking and leaping, praising God, went into the temple with him. And all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. I want to talk to you about this man because I believe this is a great picture of someone who needs healing. The Bible says he was born that way. Many believe that he probably was in the neighborhood of about 40 years old. So this condition had gone on a long time. He had been in this state for a long time. And in the, this day, there were no social welfare programs. There was no help assistance, social security, anything like that. So he would have to go to beg for money just to survive. And as many people look at their needs, and as even some churches have looked at needs, it's become all about social programs. And this is how many people approach a church. They think it's all about a social or a simply a charitable organization that would be there to help them in their needs. And I do believe there's a merit of that. There is a, something that to be said for that, but Peter doesn't say this is the first response. He says the first response is, I want to pray for you. Yes. I want to tell you what I can see God do in your life. He can heal you. When, Jesus, when Peter said to the man, look at us, the lame man looked eagerly expecting money. Because we live in the Western society. Can we talk for a minute? We live in Western society, yeah. right? We live in the greatest country on planet Earth. That could be argued by some, I get it, depending on which political leaning. When Trump was president, the Republican side was the greatest. Now that Biden is president, the Democrats think it's the greatest. But whatever, right? Right. We live in the greatest planet. But what we do is we solve a lot of problems with money. There was a woman in the Bible. She had been bleeding for 12 years. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I could be healed. She had spent all of her money and only grown worse. I'm not saying that the medical community is bad. I'm not saying that uh, they don't do some miraculous things. We live in a day of great medical advancements and achievements. Yes, we do. The things they can do today absolutely boggle the mind uh, and uh, there's great help uh, but the reality is uh, is they are still very limited this man was born that way there was uh, for whatever reason he could not walk and he needed a miracle and even despite all our good medical and that people throw money at one seventh of the United States economy the real issue is many people need a miracle. And instead of looking to God first, they often look to God last. The good news is that no matter how long you've been there, this man, like I said, was probably in his 40s. Been that way for quite a long time. Probably had tried every other thing that he could imagine. But he managed to get to the right place at the right time where someone could pray for him. What's lost today in many because of that is seeking the power of God. Seeking after what God can do. Yeah. Peter, later, he's talking to a man named Cornelius. And as he's telling Cornelius, he says in this dialogue, this is in chapter 10 of the book of Acts, he says, and you know, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Mm -hmm. And we are the apostles, uh, we the apostles are witnesses. Although he did this in Judea and in Jerusalem, they put him to death and hung him on the cross. God raised him to life on the third day. God allowed him to appear not only uh, not to the general public, but to uh, 
us who God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses, and we are those who ate and drank after he rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is a healer. You may have tried all the medical, you may have tried all of uh, that uh, is out there, spent money, and all of that, and again, there's validity to that, uh, but the answer tonight is a miracle. That you need a miracle. This is the power that Jesus has given to the church in his name. Recently had to get a form. It's called a power of attorney. And in this document that I have, uh, this means that I can act in behalf of someone else's name. That I could, I can sign documents as if it was them. I could uh, access bank accounts as if it was them. I could do lots of things because of this document. Jesus said to those who believe in my name. He's given us, in a sense, the legal power of attorney. We have the authority as the church. It's not in me. You're not going to be healed in the name of Keith Sullivan. If your faith is there, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry for you. It's not in Paul Van Epps. It's not in a saint's name. It's not in any other name but the name that is above every other name, which is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Peter looks at this man. He says... Silver and gold, it's not what you need. What you need is a miracle. You've come because you've heard we're going to pray. We are going to pray in just a moment for every one who is willing to allow me to pray. Mm -hmm. We're going to believe God for miracles. Think about this man, he's hopeless. There's nothing medically they can do for him, at least in this day. I don't know if he was born today, if they would be different. There are just some things. I just listened to a, my wife and I were on a long drive. We listened to a very difficult book. It was about a young girl who was born in the Ukraine at, under the effects of Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. Legs, organs missing, muscles missing, you know. And she went on to win medals in, in the Paralympics. Amazing story. But what's fascinating is that we still live in a day when people still are in desperate need. And the best the medical could, community could do was just simply take her legs because they weren't going to work. Peter was later questioned about this miracle. Some of the religious people got upset, arrested him. And he said in chapter 4, we are being questioned today because we've, been, we've done a good deed for this crippled man. Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures when it says the stone that the builders have rejected has now become the chief uh, cornerstone. And there is salvation in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ, which is given under heaven. God saves people. <coughs> you might have heard Pastor Paul mention the word saved or changed, someone who is born again different. That comes from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That before I was not always, I wasn't born a Christian. I, you know, I did some things that, you know, my, my mom never needs to know about. Never. And I thank God the statute of limitations has expired, right? Because there are things, right, that God has forgiven me and healed me and changed my life. In my heart, he's healed me. And used me to pray for people. I was uh, just amazed just thinking through some of the miracles I've seen. There was a woman, I'll never forget this, this was absolutely fascinating to me. 
She had to have a two inch heel, two inch heel. And the fascinating thing about this is we prayed for her. She had back problems as a result of that, as you can imagine, walking. But when I prayed for her, the leg that was two inches shorter actually became an inch longer than the other leg. It was awkward because she had the, uh, the, uh, the lift in one leg and now she's walking and she's all, the, you know, now leaning in another way and all that. She came back. We prayed for her the next night and her other leg came out. Wow absolutely miraculously healed. She said she noticed because all her pants were starting to look like this now. <laughs> she had to move the seat back in her car. I told her if I keep praying for her, she's going to make the basketball team. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but what was amazing about this woman is she was in total pain and she had been born this way. <clears throat> God did a miracle for her and no more pain and she was so excited we have a video somewhere back when videos were on not on phones but on little um, big cassettes and I don't know where it is but that God did a wonderful wonderful work in her life I pray for a young man and I'll never for, again one of these I'll never forget I, he came up, he had back problems, he was all bitter, and I began to talk to him, and he had been bullied in school, and he had been tormented, and all of this by his parents, he didn't have a good relationship with his father, and we prayed, and not only did his leg come out, but this man was totally changed. He went on to marry a, a very beautiful girl, and God blessed them with three, four children? Four, three, I don't know, three or four children, and, uh, and just really the help of God. Pray for a woman. She had no balance. She had had a stroke and she had lost her ability to, to balance. What was interesting though is the when I prayed for her, the church was on the second floor. And you came into the church through an outside staircase that was really <coughs> steep. And I remember when she came in, there were two men who had to help her into the building. One stood behind her, making sure hands on her. One walked backwards, holding her hands, helping her up the stairs. Uh, she was so nervous. We prayed for her. And she walked down the stairs unassisted. God did a miracle for this woman. I could talk about people with migraine headaches. I could tell you about some time, one, uh, uh, at times I prayed for people with cancers that God has healed. A woman uh, with severe neck pain, eczema. Prayed for one woman who had eczema. And she, uh, I ended up, uh, uh, I had gone there, I was in Lithuania, I had gone there on a trip. I ended up pastoring the church. I was pastoring the church for eight years before she told me that when I prayed for her, she got healed. <laughs> <laughs> totally healed. And she did, the reason she did that is because she brought her daughter to me who had had eczema. We prayed for her daughter and she was healed. Wow. She said, God healed me when you prayed for me. And I'm like... Why are you telling me this now? Why didn't you tell me this before? I would have loved to know that, what God had done. When I was a young, young boy, like four or five years old, I had climbed up on my garage roof. To preface this, I had climbed up the day before with some neighborhood friends, and we played up there, but they all went to school, and I wasn't in school yet, so I climbed up there by myself. Oh. I didn't know how to get down. Because they helped me down. And I was like, I don't know how to get down, so I'm up there, all that. So finally, I just decide, you know, four years old, and I'm a boy, and so, you know, uh, male brain doesn't develop, I don't know, until 20, 25, 27, something like that. Anyway, so I just run and jump off the roof. Oh. I messed up my ankle really bad. I would, if I put long times of stress and pressure on it, I would be in pain. It would be horrible. It would just always bother me. <clears throat> Went to a revival service one time and a man prayed for me. 
Today I was raking leaves, bags and bags and bags and bags of leaves. <laughs> and my ankle didn't bother me at all. Now the fact that I'm getting 56 and I'm moving a little slower, yeah, but you know what? Not my ankle. God can do a miracle for you. Whatever it might be, you might be in pain tonight. You might have a disease. You might be in sick in your body. But I know a God in heaven who has given his church the power, if you will, the power of attorney, the power to act in his name, that you can receive a miracle. That's what Peter and John saw here. That's what we can see tonight, even 2,000-ish years later. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. God can do a miracle for you. God can help you tonight. There's two miracles that can happen for you. There's a miracle in your body, and we're going to pray in just a moment for people who want that. But there's a miracle that can happen in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, however you want to describe that. That miracle is called forgiveness and salvation. That Jesus Christ will forgive your sins, change your life, do a miracle in your heart. God can touch you in a glorious way that you can be different. 17 years old, my father had died in a car accident. I was heartbroken, involved in all sorts of things, and kind of given a liberty because, you know, mom couldn't keep up with two boys like that. And so we're doing things that, again, that weren't great. But God met me one time. I came into a church just like this. God met with me, saved me. And maybe you're here tonight, you're not a Christian. It would be our privilege just to say a simple prayer with you, lead you to Jesus Christ. Not going to embarrass you. Don't need the details of all the things you've done wrong. God knows. You know that's enough. You can just tell God, I'm a sinner. And I've done wrong. And I want to be forgiven tonight. If that's you, I wonder if you'd slip up your hand very quickly. Not joining a church. We're just going to say a prayer with you very quickly. Anyone at all. You're not right with God. You're not saved. Maybe you're backslidden. You're away from God. You need Jesus. Very quickly, slip up your hand. Pray for me. Okay. Then what I want to do, you can unbow your heads. I don't, you know. You're here tonight, and you've come because you knew we were praying for the sick. We're praying for miracles. Maybe you're diseased. Maybe you're in pain. And you've come for that reason. I wonder, can you slip up your hand? Anyone here tonight, that's why you've come? You've come for that reason? Would you come? Anyone else? All right, if you're nervous, how, what is he going to do? Let's watch. And then we can talk to you about it. What could God do for you? What's the issue? Four years ago, I had a breast surgery. It was cancer. Okay. Okay. They say uh, it's stomach issue. Your leg and it's arthritis? Why? Why? Yeah, why? Do they, they say? say that's what they say. They just they it. say that's what it yeah. is. Rheumatism arthritis. Oh, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. <coughs> okay. So four years ago, our dear sister, she had breast cancer. She had, she had the operation. And, and after that, she's been in pain with rheumatoid arthritis. Can I ask you? Just two questions, and then we're going to pray for you. Are you in pain right now? Not severely, but like a... It's there. Yes. There. So the reason I ask that, <coughs> and sometimes I even say good, and people laugh mm -hmm. <laughs> like that, because you'll know when the pain leaves, won't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you'll know if it's different, right? <coughs> okay, so that's question number one. Question number two... Are you mad at anyone? Anyone really hurt you that you need to forgive? Yes. Yes. Thank you for being honest. Yeah. I've talked to people. Anyone ever hurt you? No, never, never, never. You drive on the 
390, but you're not mad at anyone that <laughs> <after a while. laughs> Or even worse, the 490, right? <laughs> so, w will you forgive them? Yes, of course. Will you let it go? Yes. God's going to help you. Definitely. Okay, where, where is the pain right now? Right now, it's my low back, and my bottom foot. Does that hinder you from moving, or? No, not at all, but always there. It's always, always there. Pain. Okay. It's going to leave. Always. I want you to say these words. I want you to say, Father in heaven. I thank you that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And right now, I receive healing for my body. I am forgiving everyone who has sinned against me and has hurt me. I'm letting it go right now. I'm letting go right now. The pain, the pain will leave my body. Will leave my body. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus sets me free. Sets me free. I, am I am healed. I am healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Looser right now in the name of Jesus. Father, a miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus name. Where's the pain now? Where's, where's the pain? <laughs> I don't feel like it. Okay, wait, I want you to turn around. I want you to just tell them. Where's the pain? <laughs> pain is gone. <laughs> Jesus Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Thank you. Thank you so yeah, God's much. touching you. He's going to help you. I am. He really is. Now, maybe you, you thought, oh my gosh, I don't want to be embarrassed. No. But I've just prayed. That's all we're going to do. We're going to pray. For people. Is there anyone else? You've come tonight. You need a miracle. God can help you. Anyone, very quickly. Come on up. <coughs> what could God do for you? I've been having some digestive issues. Okay. And I had an endoscopy, and they said I had mild gastritis. Um, and I have another test coming up. Okay. On the ninth, so. I actually had major gastritis. Did you? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know what it was? It was martial arts. Have you ever been involved in martial arts? No. Okay. <laughs> when I prayed and, oh. and let that go, because martial arts are very spiritual. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Clearing the aura, it's like, that's bizarre. Right? right. So that's, that's uh, you know, number one. Not, not, anyone you're upset with? Yes. Do you forgive them? Yes. Are you nervous about anything? Yeah, I'm kind of a warrior. You are. Overall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I take authority. I take authority over this digestive, over this digestive issue. issue right now, right now in, my body. in my body. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Everyone, everyone who has sinned against who has sinned against me. I am casting. I am casting all my cares, all my cares upon you. Upon you. For you care for me. For you care for me. It is the blood of Jesus that makes me whole. And I am healed. And I am healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Looser right now, Father, a miracle. Right now, can you tell right now, or is this something you're gonna have to eat something and then no? Um, I had a slight bit of pain on my left side, and I don't feel it right now. Praise so, praise God. I have a good friend. I'm actually friends with his parents, but uh, he's still a good guy, and I know him. He was he was born a. Milk, lactose intolerant. Mm. God healed him. Yeah. He ate ice cream every day for six months. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I've got time to make up for it." Yeah. And so, thank God. Anyone else? You, you you need a miracle. Thank you God. Have a question? Sure. Can you pray for somebody that's not here? Sure. We could do that. What's the issue? My daughter. She's um, got. Um, that now. She's, uh, I guess I am nervous if you're going to ask that question. <laughs> um, she has a multiple, multiple autoimmune diseases. Okay. Um, and what's her first name? Jill. Jill. Let's pray right now for Jill. Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. Let's agree together. Let's pray. Right now. Father, right now, Father, touch Jill. Jill. Touch Jill right now. We're praying, God, for a miracle in the body. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you touch Jill right now. Father, God, a miracle in the body. We rebuke this disease. Believe her body. It is the blood of Jesus. It is us authority. In the name of Jesus, God, we take authority over this Twice in the Bible, Jesus would pray for someone who wasn't there, and they got healed. A centurion's servant and uh, a uh, another man in John chapter five. And he just prayed, and, they, and in fact, in John chapter five, he said, "What time?" It's 8.30, by the way. Yeah. What time did you start feeling better? And he went, 8.30? And the guy went, that's what we prayed. Oh, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. just ask her how she's feeling. That's, Thank you. What can God do for you? Um, lactose You're lactose intolerant? Yeah. You're also Keith intolerant, right? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> My friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and all your life? Uh, no? No? When did it start? Um, high school. Okay. So, kind of when your body was changing? You kind of developed that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I want to pray for you. You afraid of the future? A little. A little. We all are. But don't let it stop you. You can't stop it, so don't let it stop you. Right? Right. I want you to say these words. Father, it's in your name. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you care for me. And I'm giving you my future. You're going to help me. I speak to this, this infirmity. Lactose and salt. I'm speaking a miracle. Into my body, it is the blood of Jesus that sets me free, and I am healed in Jesus' name. Lucer, right now, Father, we break every inherited curse, God. I speak a miracle right now, God, healing for you. In Jesus' name, show for So you try some milk or something, and see what happens, and let me know tomorrow night. All right. Thank God. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. One last time before I turn it over to Pastor. Yes. My daughter is battling um, colon cancer. Ooh. Oh. She's only 37. And that's her. And she's on chemo now. What's her name? Bridget. Bridget. Let's pray for Bridget. Bridget. Father, right now, God, Bridget needs a miracle. Father, we're asking you, God, to do work right now in her body. We're rebuking cancer right now. We're rebuking that this disease. We're sending it away right now, back to hell where it came from right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I'm speaking a miracle. Of right now. Father, we're eating the blood, God, of Jesus Christ. God, touch her, God. Help her right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, a miracle right now. Lord, 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 I say, God, do a wonderful work in your life, in your body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any chance she could come tomorrow night? I don't know. Would you ask her? I will. I'd love to pray for her. Thank you. I really would. Love to see her get healed. God can heal her. I've seen yes, cancers heal. Yes, yes, God. We believe she is healed. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise as Pastor comes this way. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful to see what God is doing. Amen. I want to invite you back for tomorrow night, our final uh, service with Pastor Keith Sullivan. Amen. And uh, plan on bringing a love offering if you can. Uh, you know, afford to, you know, respect the man of God and all that he's done, amen, and what God is can do in your life also. We're going to uh, dismiss right now for the next couple minutes. I'd like you to hang out and talk. We'd like to get to know you better. Amen. Praise God. Uh, David, can you bless us as we go? Yeah, Lord, we thank you that we can go and know that you go with us. We don't go out of here alone. We ask, Lord, that you be with us this week and guide us. Help us to be fruitful. 
help us to live a life we want us to live in your name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. You're dismissed. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.